Hi, this is Mike Madura and you're listening to the ZFM Sport Podcast. Z. Z- Zimbabwe's finest, finest radio. Z FM Stereo. Stereo. It's Lionel Messi. He scored. The goal the world wanted. It's time for the biggest sports stories. It's Neymar trying to feed it through. It's a stretch and it's in. And I can't remember the last time I saw something like this. Extraordinary scenes. The biggest interviews. It's more difficult. Obviously, it's more difficult. And all the analysis right here. If they play poorly, they come back, they've got all the excuses. You can't have it both ways. Every weekday, it's my sport, it's your sport. It's CFM Sport. Let's join the team for the biggest show in the world of sport on CFM Studio. My station, your station. Always exciting on a Friday as we build up to the weekend. Plenty of action to anticipate. It is Fire Friday, Party Friday. Call it whatever you like. We present the biggest sports show anywhere on Zimbabwe Radio with the biggest names in sport. Chris Gray, Mark Pozzo, Alois Bunjira. My name is Mike Madoda and our producer, Sean Tafirenika. In local cricket, the Pro 50 Championship takes center stage this weekend and it all got underway this morning with a top of the table clash between the Eagles and the Tuskers. It'll be blood, guts and no small amount of action as South African arch rivals the Lions and Bulls go head to head at Ellis Park in the pick of this weekend's Super Rugby matches and in the beautiful game old enemies Real Madrid and Barcelona clash for the second time this week in El Clasico, the biggest rivalry in world football elsewhere neighbours Everton and Liverpool clash in the Merseyside derby and the North and South collide in Italy when Juventus takes on Napoli. The Warriors, the Chevrons, the Cheetahs, the Mighty Warriors and the Sables. From the pool to the track to the field, we are Team Zimbabwe. The Home Front. Local sports news and analysis. It's exactly 10 minutes past 6 and we start on the local front with cricket where uh, Eagles and Tuskers met at Harare Sports Club in what was a preview of the eventual Pro 50 Championship final scheduled for next weekend. Both were unbeaten as their previous encounter was washed out by rain. So this is how it all unfolded today. Tuskers batting first, 283 for 5, largely thanks to 168 from Craig Irvine. Brian Chari weighing in with 65 Trevor Garway, 2 for 41. So Eagles' uh, target was 284, and they did it. Richard Mutambani, 99 not out. Tinashe Komankwame, 65. Reggie Chikava, 54. Sean Williams, 2 for 47. Eagles winning that game by four wickets with five balls remaining. In the other encounter between the Rhinos and the Mountaineers, Mountaineers, 228 for 8. Innocent Kaya, 82. Roy Kaya, 34. Kyle Jarvis, though, 6 for 35 doing the damage there. And Rhinos bowled out for 181. Prince Masavuri, 71. Shingi Masakadza, 3 for 20. Roy Kaya, 4 for 40. So Mountaineers winning that by 47 runs. So, uh, Mike, you would say that uh, everything went today according to the script. Yeah, absolutely. I think the, the better sides won. Uh, the Tuskers haven't performed uh, very well, uh, especially in the last uh, few months. Uh, you know, uh, you carry the form uh, that you have, even from the longer format of the game. They were poor in the Logan Cup, uh, and uh, no surprises that they're being outplayed uh, in the Pro 50 Championship, losing by four wickets. Uh, uh, on face value, it looked like a decent tag- target, uh, 283, punctuated by that uh, uh, magnificent century from Craig Irvine, 168. I mean, uh, trying to play himself into recognition for selection uh, with the Chevrons, no doubt. So he's one to look at. Uh, my concern though, when I take a look at all this, is that I am seeing the usual names. Correct. I'm not yep. seeing any new names that we can talk about, any young talents that are coming through that we can say, okay, hang on, 
today's one for the future is the usual fellas Craig Irvine, Brian Shari, Regis Chakava, Sean Williams, Roy Kaia, Kyle Jarvis, Prince Mashaure, the usual names. I mean, if you had listened to ZFM Sports three years ago, we would have been rattling off the same names. Exactly. Exactly right. Let's look ahead to the weekend fixtures. Uh, Sunday, we'll see Rhinos take on Eagles that game in Kwekwe and Tuskers against Mountaineers at Takashinga. Tuesday, we'll see the Mountaineers take on Tuskers at Takashinga. Right, just some uh, golf news coming in from the team championship currently being played in Johannesburg at uh, Danefern. The good news is that uh, the Zimbabwe team of Ben Follett-Smith and Stephen Ferreira are currently tied for fifth place on 14 under par, just three shots behind the leaders uh, Prince Lou and JC Ritchie of South Africa with a day to play tomorrow. So uh, we wish uh, Ben Follett-Smith and Stephen Ferreira the very best of luck. They're just three shots off the pace and uh, certainly in with a shout. Hi, this is Alexandra Maseko and I'm the National Basketball Team Captain and you're listening to ZFM Sports. Z. Just before we give you the rest of your local sports news roundup, uh, a reminder of the Pro Feeds Daily Sports Trivia. Send in your hashtags on 0731-168-045. That's 0731-168-045. Get in early and give yourself a big chance. We've got netball, rugby, and of course some football news. We start with the netball, where the feud between the Zimbabwe Netball Association, Zina, and the Rainbow Amateur Netball League has sucked in the Sports and Recreation Commission amid allegations that a senior official at the commission was advising it not to register uh, not to register the breakaway league earlier this week Zena through Secretary General Barbara Rice wrote letters to principals of various netball teams threatening that players active in the breakaway league would not be considered for national team selection SRC Director General Prince Mopajiriho said that he was not aware of the feud and promised to immediately look into the matter in rugby news Mutare Sports Club Gatha Mackenzie Monetsi is excited at the prospect of his team playing in the newly formed Rugby Super 6 League. Monetzi said the new league will give his players the chance to pit themselves against some of the best talents in the country. The league, which will begin on the 16th of March, will feature the country's top six teams, Harare Sports Club, Old Hararians, Highlanders, Old Georgians, Matebeleland Warriors and Motare Sports Club. And we wrap it up with news coming out of the Castle Lager Premier Soccer League, where Harare Giants, Dynamos and Caps United will clash on the 10th of March in an invitational charity challenge cup at Rufa Stadium with the winner taking home $20,000 while the losers get $15,000. I think we need to get clarification whether it's RTGS dollars or US dollars. <laughs> now, Caps United coach Lloyd Chitembwe believes the match will help him take stock of their preparation so far. The two Harare Giants missed out on the ZNA Charities Shield with the sponsors opting for a Highlanders and Chicken Inn match instead. We interrupt this program to announce that in the spotlight this week is the Ethernet Bulk SMS platform. Tune into the Ignition, Exhale, The Big Show and The Rush to find out how you can grow your sales using the Ethernet Bulk SMS platform. All business owners, visit www.econet.co.zw. Select Bulk SMS, register and start advertising through SMS today. Terms and conditions apply. Ethernet Wireless, inspired to change your world. Get your Quesa Play device for just $59. Quesa Play, it's unlike TV. Here we go again. Enjoy World Class Radio Online. ZFM Stereo is available on TuneIn. Search for ZFM Stereo and you got it. From the front of the grid to the back of the net, it's ZFM Sport. 
International Sports News Roundup, where the world comes out to play. A fire Friday, and we try and get the party started right here on your favourite sports show. Get in touch with us with your thoughts, your views, as well as your predictions, because lots of big matches in the beautiful game, which we'll get to in the second half of the show. Apart from our WhatsApp platform, you can take advantage of Twitter and Facebook. Follow and interact with at ZFM Sport, or simply follow Alois Bunjira, Chris Gray, Mark Pozo, myself, Mike Madoda, Sean Tafirinika, or Barry Manandi in our personal capacities. Now, Let's take a look at Super Rugby. The Wellington Hurricanes outclassed the ACT Brumbies 43-13 after a hat-trick from Ngani Laumape. Dane Coles also got in on the act, scoring a stunning first-half brace, combining opportunism, speed, skill and finishing that uh, the great Hurricanes fullback Christian Cullen would have been proud of. In the other morning game, the Melbourne Rebels fought off a late Highlanders fight back to record a famous 24-19 win as the kilted Kiwis wilted in the Australian heat in Melbourne. Melbourne. Tomorrow, Malcolm Max will lead the Lions against the Bulls at Ellis Park. Springbok hooker Max was for a favourite uh, over regular vice captain Yanchis in the absence of Warren Whiteley, who has been ruled out with a pectoral muscle injury for at least six weeks. Max, a taciturn man of action, said he prefers to lead by example. I think Sean was just trying to show off his English there. <laughs> 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 yeah, I don't really know what to say, to be honest. Uh, I told Coach I'm I don't really talk much and I don't have anything to say, but yeah, I mean, uh, obviously tough to follow in, in Waz's footsteps because he's probably one of the best captains you'll find, um, but yeah, I'm, I'm very, very humbled and just thankful at the same time. I don't like to talk much, uh, to be honest, if I've got nothing to say, I'm not going to say anything, I'll just leave by, by actions because at the end of the day, actions speak louder than words. It always, always pose a challenge. Um, yeah, like, like Coach said, I've, I've got other I've got other leaders in the team that can help and guide me. I mean, it's not just one that makes decisions on the field. There's, there's 15 guys that, that can help with, with that. Z. Now, last year, the Bulls shocked the Hurricanes in the first round, then lost four consecutive matches and finished in 12th position. Bulls captain Andre Pollard says the Bulls want to bounce back from their loss to the Jaguares last weekend. We, we chase high standards and we're hard on ourselves. Uh, we're, not, we're not result driven, we're process driven, but we, we're still very hard on ourselves if things don't go right. So we were very frustrated for a couple of days, uh, but we put that behind us and we put all our focus into this weekend coming. So like you said, big game. Uh, it's still early, but you, you lose two out of three in the beginning, it, it can be quite tough ch- ch- chasing the rest of the back, so you've got to get off to a good start. Like Coach referenced earlier, they are probably the top South African side in, in, in the conference, so it's going to be a challenge to re-cock at uh, Emirates Park, but it should be good fun. Uh, Chris, uh, both teams losing last weekend, the Lions losing to the Stormers and then uh, the Bulls, somewhat surprisingly, some would have thought to the mm-hmm. Jaguars, both would be looking to bounce back. Mm-hmm. Both would be looking to bounce back and uh, I think especially that loss from the Jaguars probably uh, marred them quite a bit, especially just starting out uh, in this season. So I think that they'll both be looking to bounce back so it should be a tasty encounter. Alternatively, it could go completely left because both sides are just trying to meet out a win out of the game. Uh, the Lions, of course, have won six of their last seven games against against the Bulls, including each of their last four in a row, this after failing to win any of the initial 11 encounters in Super Rugby. So, Chris, uh, I mean, uh, pause. Uh, it looks like the Lions will go in the more confident side because of the recent record versus their arch rivals. Yeah, and I think uh, they go in with the momentum that uh, they've, they've got a good record against uh, against the Bulls. They're playing at, uh, they're playing at home, which uh, always makes it uh, a, a big advantage. Um, Looking at both of these sides, I mean, after the first game, the first weekend of Super Rugby, I looked at the Bulls and I thought, wow, these guys are looking good. Yeah. Then they go out last weekend and they get beaten. <laughs> and then I think, no, come on. Surely, I mean, they have got probably the best side I've seen the Bulls line up with for a very long time. But they're taking on a side that uh, has been hit by a massive injury in Warren Whiteley. Um, I think he he's not only... A leader, he certainly brings a lot to the game, and um, at uh, 
various stages of, of the game and at, uh, at 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 the breakdown, he is phenomenal. And I think he'll be he'll be missed. But uh, I think it's going to be a good game of rugby. Let's hope it's a good game of running rugby. Um, but uh, I think uh, the home side will continue to dominate uh, against the Bulls, and uh, it will be a win. But uh, it's going to be a narrow win. And of course, uh, the domination has seen the Lions winning their last fourteen games when hosting South African opposition. Last losing at home to their fellow countrymen in February 2015 when they were beaten by the Storm. As a, uh, as a professional sportsman, I mean, uh, you played in derbies. Uh, and I just want to pick your brain on this because you've got uh, the Bulls uh, travelling to Johannesburg. They're going to be in Ellis Park, the home of the enemy. Of course, they're yeah, just from, from, down. From, from down yeah. the road in Pretoria. <laughs> yeah. uh, but uh, how do you get yourself prepared for going to play in a stadium where you know it's going to have possibly 50, 60,000 people and 95% of those people want you to lose how do you get yourself mentally prepared and how did you used to do it in the derbies that you played I mean you played for Caps versus Dimbare in Rufaro Stadium where the majority of the crowd was back in Dimbare or the National Sports Stadium you played in other derbies in, 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 as a sports person how did you go about that? Yeah, I think, I think most of it is about uh, the confidence in yourself. You know, when you know that you can you can do it, all you need to do is, Grabowski used to call it, uh, put, your, put wood before your brain. He's basically saying that what you see, the crowd, let it not be, uh, get into your brain. Let it just bounce on the wood. Oh. It doesn't get to your brain and know that you are good enough. You just go in and play. So sometimes most of those, that noise, <laughs> we don't even hear. Mm. You don't even hear you at all because you talk, there is a time that you are just in the system that you can't even hear what is. What so is so the good outside. coaches manage that situation as yes. well. I mean, everything that's happened. So they're not just preparing you tactically and te- technically, but also mentally. Because you told me yes. a fascinating story about uh, uh, Grabowski, I think it was, whenever you guys used to go to barber fields, that uh, at, sometimes he wouldn't allow you. To go and warm up, yeah, no warm up. Barber fields because no warm up. It, it plays with yeah, your brain now. Because the barber yeah. fields uh, crowd was so hostile, he didn't want you guys to come into contact w- with that crowd before you actually went onto the pitch. Exactly, because when you go into the into the warm up, everything is easy. You can actually observe mm. what is happening, and now that situation actually gets you afraid. But if you just get inside and just play, once you get into the groove of the match, mm. that's when you have this block. That you, are, you don't even hear whatever they are they are doing now, you you focus. But it it is something that you need to teach your brain to actually switch on and off. Okay, let's take a look at the rest of the weekend. Uh, Super Rugby fixes. Uh, the Waikato Chiefs will take on the Sunwolves from Japan. The Queensland Reds uh, take on uh, the Crusaders. The Sharks versus the Stormers in a South African derby. And then the Jaguares will take on the Auckland Blues. Hi, I'm JC Creel, Springbok and Blue Bulls backline player. You are listening to ZFM Sports. Around the world in 60 seconds, international sports news. We take off on Miami where Jonathan Vegas fired a bogey 364 to open up a two-shot lead after the opening round of the Honda Classic. The Venezuelans struck six birdies to set the clubhouse target at PGA National with Ben Silverman, one of four players sharing second alongside former major winners Zach Johnson, Ernie Els and Lucas Glover. The WGC Mexico Championship continues throughout the weekend. In Dubai, Roger Federer overcame two rain delays to beat Martin Fuskovic in this to reach the semifinals of the Dubai Duty Free Tennis Championships. The 37-year-old came through 7-6-6-4 in a tight contest to remain on course to claim his first title since Basel in October. Touching down in India, Australia coach Justin Langer has effectively dismissed Glenn Maxwell's request to bat higher up in the order in the 50 over, saying that the management will do whatever is best for the team. Maxwell has made a strong case for promotion in the batting order on the tour of India after producing match winning knocks of 56 and an unbeaten 100 13 to help Australia clinch the T20 series 2-0. Batting a number four would allow the Victorian to gather further momentum ahead of the World Cup in May, but Langer wants Maxwell to continue as a finisher at number seven, where he batted in the recent ODI series against India on home soil. The daily sports trivia question is brought to you by ProFeeds. ProFeeds, your feed and farm professionals. Your feed and farm professionals are bringing you the... uh 
daily trivia question. Uh, it is competition time. Uh, simply send us a WhatsApp message every evening with the hashtag Profeeds Trivia and you might be the lucky listener we call back. We'll field you two questions and if you get them both correct you'll be our daily winner and end with a chance of winning a fabulous prize. This month a four plate Capri gas stove and oven. Our second draw of the year will be on Friday the 29th of March. Now you've heard of Anne Robinson. Anne Robinson, isn't that the lady from that game? Uh, yeah, that's it. Which game? Um, do you want to be a millionaire? No, no, not who wants to be no, a no, millionaire. No, 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 I know the one. Uh, where's the glasses? Yes, yes. red hair. Uh, yeah. Yes, oh, man. What show is it, Paz? Oh, wait, 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 oh, man. My mind's gone black. Uh, BBC, BBC. Um... Oh, oh sure. Why, why are you doing this, Paz? <laughs> <laughs> now we've no, all got a bug in our brain. Because race. anyway, <laughs> she's, she's like quite cheeky. <laughs> So, our quiz, Mr. Tonight. Weakest tonight's. link. You are the weakest, the weakest yes, link. Goodbye. The weakest link. <laughs> so, the weakest link <laughs> presenter <laughs> presenting the hashtag ProFeeds Trivia tonight is yours truly, Chris Gray. <laughs> so, we have Elton e on the line. Hey, Elton e. Hi, Chris. Good to say, Kumvuru. Ah, Bosha. So, okay, what's your favorite sports team before we get into the questions? Uh, Real Madrid and Arsenal. Ish. Ah, this is a nega Ah, I'm going to do track to minimize the scoreline by your classic one. Your first question, and this is your local one. Eagles and Mountaineers are two of the four franchises that make up the Zimbabwe cricket. Name the other two. We were talking about them a little bit earlier. Oh, it's uh, the Mountaineers and the... And, uh, I gave you the Mountaineers and the Eagles. What are the other two? Oh, Mountaineers and Eagles. Then it's uh, one is an uh, animal. Matebelen and Tuskers and the is uh, Matebelen and Tuskers there? Yes. Yep. Uh-huh. One more. Oh, um, it's an animal. Oh, um, the the Eagles. No, 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 no. We gave you the Eagles. So we've got eagles, mountaineers, and tuskers. There's one more. It's a, it's an animal. It's almost extinct. It gets poached. The rhinos. Yes. 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 Oh. <laughs> Who doesn't know about rhino poaching in Zimbabwe? <laughs> okay, your second question, and you could be in with a chance of winning that full plate Capri gas stove and oven. The Brumbies are a super rugby team from which country? The Brumbies? Yes. Aren't they from New Zealand? Oh. Um, okay, I'll give you another try. Ah. It's not New Zealand. Which country? Which country? Are they? Uh, uh, no, yeah, Altony, are you there? Yes, I'm there. Okay, which country is it? Okay. I can't hear you. Come on, Elton. You don't mean to say you are Take a guess. Link. Take Goodbye. a guess. South Africa. Uh, you are the weakest you link. You are Goodbye. the weakest link. I... I... I didn't get you. The Daily Sports Trivia Question was brought to you by Profeeds. Profeeds, the performance feed. Get your Quesa Play device for just $59. Quesa Play. It's unlike TV. It's 
the Rumble in the Jungle as the Warriors of Zimbabwe take on the Red Devils of Congo in the Africa Cup Nations Qualifier. Yes, it's going down on the 24th of March 2019 live at the National Sports Stadium. Who will survive the inferno and stand out victorious? You don't want to miss this. So get your tickets now at www.clickandpay.africa. You can also purchase using EcoCash, Telecash, MasterCard, Visa or ZimSwitch. All tickets to be bought in advance. That means no tickets at the gate. Tickets are going for $10 rest of the ground, $50 pay 15 to 18 and $200 for VIP. Entertainment from local and international artists. Gates will close at 1.30 p.m. and the match starts at 3 p.m. You've got to be there. Zimbabwe's finest, finest radio. ZFM Stereo. Stay up to date with the latest sporting action and the freshest lineup of on demand sports on Quese iFlex. Immerse yourself. Bask in the glory of pulsating action anywhere, anytime. Welcome to the beautiful game on ZFM Stereo. Brought to you by Quese iFlex. Quese iFlex. Entertainment on the go. A league that makes football oh so beautiful. Where artistry and strokes of genius are the order of any day. Where the game is played with a smile and the little master creates his magic. It's All the news from the Spanish La Liga on ZFM Sport. The goal, the world. Now, after knocking Real Madrid out of the Copa del Rey, Barcelona now have the opportunity to send their rivals packing in the title race too. Barca's 3-0 victory on Wednesday means that Barcelona will return to the Santiago Bernabéu tomorrow with a spring in their step. Although Santiago Solari's side will be deflated by the manner of their recent defeat to the Blaugrana, they'll undoubtedly be confident of, aven- of avenging the result in the league where they have been very impressive over the past couple of months. Football pundit Gabriel Rio Makoti believes Santiago Solari's future will be cut short if Real Madrid fall again to Barcelona. I mean, I don't think in terms of, of getting sacked now, I don't think that's going to happen. But, um, you know, it, it certainly could foreshadow a change in the summer. I, you have to remember that they generally haven't bested Barcelona domestically. And, and that's kind of been the normal run of affairs. They, they've obviously done it uh, in the Champions League. Uh, certainly, Florentino, I don't think feels that the that, that the personnel is that much worse than last year. It's the same midfield uh, as as last year. Uh, the defense arguably is is better. Uh, certainly, defensively, with Regulon in there um, and Courtois, you know, been seen as as an upgrade over Kaylor Navas when Courtois plays. Um, and now you have Vinicius, and of course, you lost Cristiano at the other end. But people were supposed to step up, so. I think Solari's made the unpopular choices, and now Florentino is stepping back and saying, "Okay, so I gave you license to make those uh, uh, unpopular choices. I didn't. I'm not forcing you to play Isco or Bale or or Asensio, but you got to deliver at the other end. And if you can't make it work without those guys, I'll find somebody else who'll give it a go." Z. El Clasico part two uh, in this week. Uh, Alois, I mean uh, Wednesday, three uh, 0 to Barcelona. Where do you see this changing? And is there any hope that Real Madrid, uh, do they have hope of turning this performance around? No, I don't think so. I think it's, it's another defeat. What they need to just do is to avoid a humiliating defeat. Mm. Because now we, we won't be surprised even if they get a, a hammer. You know, because Barcelona, we have noticed now, we've seen that the current form, they can, they can actually beat anybody in Spain. Real Madrid included, Atletico Madrid included. So for me as a real fan, I just say, you know what, just avoid humiliation. Should, should it be a concern, Chris, that uh, Barcelona were able to do this with Lionel Messi not playing his best, you know, in midweek? Uh, it wasn't about Messi. Uh, we expected it to be about Messi, but uh, Real Madrid seemed to have the measure of Messi. But they hadn't counted on Suarez being informed. Absolutely. And I think for Real Madrid, that doesn't bode well. That now, if Messi is bang on form and he's coming into this particular match, it's like they've had a mental breakdown already in that particular match. Now, coming into this one, likelihood is there's some uh, mental work that needs to happen there. And 
if Messi is at his absolute best, then it's pretty much over. Uh, Paz, Real Madrid, many people feel that they missed out on an opportunity to uh, refresh their squad. They have stuck to too many of the old guns yep. for too long uh, without investing in the world-class superstars like they used to do in years gone by to keep themselves very competitive at the top of the table. They have, and uh, you can see what's what's happened to them this this season. They They really are the second, third best team in in um, Spanish football at the moment and I mean we were, we were always saying Real Madrid, one of the best teams in the world, they always buy the top players but I think as soon as you just leave one season, one season as a top club like Real Madrid that you don't spend big it all comes back to bite you in the end, and that's exactly what it's doing now. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're very right. I think uh, I think uh, that, that period that Zidane was, he was actually working on the players that had been left by somebody else, and he just moved them into into machine. But what he didn't do for Real Madrid hmm. is bring in players. You know, it was all about himself. What he's going to do? They didn't really think about the future of the club when they were doing that, because a team like like Mark you say, you need to bring in one or two, one or two, so that you can sustain yourself. As you go, as you go forward, so they missed out on those big names. Right now, who do they buy? Mm. Right now, they can't buy any big name now. You can't bring in uh, boys from PSG. You can't bring in boys from Man City. Yeah, they, uh, you know they're, those, they're, those, yeah, those clubs are, are, are not players. necessarily selling clubs. And uh, not. when you take a look at Real Madrid, Chris, again, the fact that uh, the hopes of the club in an attacking sense lie on the shoulders of an 18-year-old player called <laughs> Vinicius. Uh, I think that's a damning indictment. That's why he should be coming in amongst a clutch yes, of stars yes, and I mean, not playing under pressure. Yes, what we, what they need to do is when you are bringing in these young stars and every club needs to, every club needs to bring in the young guys, but you need to prop them up with your experienced players who are at their absolute best, yeah. who are at the top of their game. Because what you do to this, to the 18-year-old is you put him under a lot of pressure, that's one. Some of these players crack under pressure. It's not everyone who steps up and performs. Some of them crack under pressure. So one, you've already messed up an investment that you had made in that particular player. So it's fine to bring in your younger players but for Real Madrid what they need to do is prop up these younger players because there's there's no way he's going to be going head to head with a Galactico from Manchester City and that's supposed to be an even kill. It's never going to work out that way so they need to get in some more experienced player to prop him up initially and his time will come but his time is not right now facing Lionel Messi. Uh, we want to get at your predictions for El Clasico. Can Real Madrid turn it around? They lost 3-0 to Barcelona uh, on Wednesday in Luis Suarez with a brace and a very good performance in that game. What will be the scoreline this weekend? Send in your predictions on 0731-168-045. We'll try and read uh, as many as we can towards the end of the show. That's 0731-168-045. Your La Liga weekend fixtures. Rayo Vallecano takes on Girona. Espanol will host Real Valladolid. Villarreal versus Alaves. Huesca versus Sevilla. Aiba takes on Celta Vigo, Real Betis versus Getafe, Real Sociedad entertains Atletico Madrid, Valencia welcomes the Athletic Club of Bilbao at La Mestalla, and then of course the big one in Madrid, it is Real Madrid taking on arch rivals Barcelona. All the rivalry. Changing moments. Aguero! All the updates from the Premier League on ZFM Sport. This is the league we want to watch. Right, Liverpool midfielder, you know, Ronaldo Massesi expects a big fight in Sunday's game against Merseyside rivals Everton at Goodison Park after three Premier League draws in four games. Liverpool look back to their best on Wednesday when they swept aside Watford in a 5-0 win. Liverpool are one point ahead of Manchester City with 10 games to go in the Premier League season and manager Jürgen Klopp wants his team to enjoy the ride. Let's hear from yeah, but the Klopp. It's the same. It was- yeah, but it's for us the same. It was the same importance. I said that I think a couple of weeks ago when we when we spoke about the, the upcoming games and um, because of, we spoke probably and 
either way we spoke only about Bayern or only about United I don't know nobody really spoke then about Watford and Everton and stuff like that so um, so they are all important and for us if we, we, are, we are Liverpool and we, we play against Everton for us it's a World Cup final as well so that's how it is that's how you have to take it um, but it's not a World Cup final obviously but it's a very 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 important game in a season and not because of the situation only because of the because of the history that's how it is but the situation makes it even more special of course Z. Right, this will be the 200th top flight meeting between Everton and Liverpool, becoming only the second fixture to have been played that many times in the top English league after Aston Villa and Everton, which was 202 games. There's some useful information for you. Right, Michael, so uh, Liverpool returned to winning ways. Uh, they beat Watford. 5-0 on Wednesday, having not scored for 180 minutes. You can certainly say they've got their mojo back and 10 games to go. They need to win their 10 games. Yeah, they need to win their 10 games. Uh, Destiny is in Liverpool's hands. They win all their games. They're crown champions. It's that simple. But uh, we know this league. This league is not predictable. This league is not easy. There are no games that you can chalk in as wins in the English Premier League. We've already seen uh, Man City losing to teams like Newcastle United, despite the fact that they scored after 45 seconds. We have seen a lot of surprise results over the the season. And Klopp is uh, all too aware of this, that he can't even look at a team like Burnley at Anfield and say that's three points because he knows that on a given day sure. Burnley can put in a performance where they can disappoint you so the right approach I think is for you to take every game as it comes treat every game as a cup final Liverpool is playing Everton it's not an easy game playing against um, uh, the neighbours uh, from Goodison Park uh, and of course uh, it'll be a hostile atmosphere as it were uh, and uh, Liverpool would need to go in there and I think the important thing in this game uh, pretty much almost like what Alois talked about early on when we were asking about uh, the, the big game atmospheres or the hostile atmospheres is Liverpool need to manage the emotional side of this game in the first 15 or 20 minutes because if they manage to get through that without one or two rash bookings, uh, without one or two uh, mistakes then Liverpool can then control the game because Liverpool are a better footballing side than Everton, but they need to control the emotions, especially in the Merseyside derby, which I think is the is sort of like the fixture with the most red cards in the English Premier League. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah. They, they need to manage the emotional side of, game, of, of things. If they do that, I fancy Liverpool to win. They could even win big in this game. Alex? Yeah, uh, like Mike said, you know what? Liverpool, they just need to go in the end play. You know, that, that block that I was talking about, that's what they need. Because obviously at Goodison Park, they, they, won't, they, won't, they, they, won't be, they won't be friendly. This is actually a, a rivalry that we know, that a serious rivalry. They just, mm-hmm. here, he, close by. And uh, Liverpool, all they need to just do is to focus on their games if they want to win this championship. Once they start looking at what Manchester City is doing and all that, it starts affecting their game. So this is a season that I think Liverpool has to win. If they don't win the league this season, it's going to be very, very difficult to win this league again. Right, let's look at the rest of the fixtures in the Premier League this weekend. Bournemouth will entertain Manchester City. Brighton are at home to Huddersfield. Crystal Palace travel to Burnley. Manchester United are at home to Southampton. Cardiff visit Wolves. West Ham against Newcastle. Leicester, Brendan Rodgers has his first crack against Watford as manager. Fulham against Chelsea. And Tottenham Hotspur mm. against Arsenal. It's nah, hotting up a big, for fourth place, game. is it not, boys? <laughs> yeah. And uh, I think yeah. as much as the Merseyside derby is a big game this weekend, this, for me, this London derby is massive. Yeah, space. Space has just put us in that kind of situation. We're not complaining as fans. Mm. We want to enjoy. For, <laughs> we, want, we want to enjoy. But space is just is just complicated. The, uh, the the competition for position mm-hmm. number three and four. They were they they were number three. Everybody thought that they were number three. Yeah. You know. And now that number three is up for grabs as well with the three chasing teams. So this is going to be exciting. Where you're gonna have two teams that can qualify for top for top four in the last game failing to qualify for top four. Yeah, yeah this is going to be a juicy one coming into this one. I think for Arsenal especially, they had a really good run at the start of the season, but it's starting to look a little bit shaky for them now. So I think they're coming into this thinking, you know what, this is something we need to prove that we can clinch this particular win against Tottenham. Okay, just uh, quickly, uh, all of us, uh, predictions, uh, first of all for the Merseyside derby, Mike? Uh, 3-0 Liverpool. 3-0 Liverpool, okay, and then uh, Tottenham Arsenal? Tottenham Arsenal, uh, I'm going with uh, a two-all draw. Two-all draw, right, Chris? Uh, this is a tough one. Um, I'm going to go Liverpool to win. 
Not sure by how much. Uh, and uh, Arsenal to win as well. Okay, Alois? Yeah, I think Liverpool will win. Liverpool will win this one. But uh, the Tottenham Spurs match, I think it's going to be a stalemate. A stalemate? Give it a draw. Yeah. Wow. Okay, so I'm going to go uh, Liverpool to win 3 1. And I'm going to go Arsenal to win 4 2. Sharks. Hmm. <laughs> the beautiful game brought to you by Quesse. Uh, turn your TV into an entertainment hub and choose what you want to watch with the all new Quesse Play device. Enjoy seamless entertainment streaming on apps such as Quesse iFlix, Netflix, YouTube, as well as Al Jazeera. Watch unlimited online entertainment from live sport events, movies, series, top kids shows, and even play games on video channels. Get your Quesse Play device today at zwstore.quesse.com or visit your nearest economic shop for only $59. Kwese is revolutionizing home entertainment with Kwese iFlix. Pogba! Pogba! Kwese iFlix brings you the freshest lineup of on-demand sports and entertainment on the go. Get access to an extensive range of sports, over 3,000 shows, movies, and more, all at your fingertips. Download the iFlix app today on Google Play Store and Apple App Store and watch TV wherever, whenever. Kwese brings you entertainment on the go with Kwese iFlix. Kwese, beyond TV. Paolo Rossi, Marco Van Basten, George Weir, Gabriel Batistuta, Alessandro Del Piero. Serie A has been home to some of the world's finest strikers. And now, they welcome arguably the greatest of them all. Cristiano Ronaldo, the best of Italian football on Z. Some good news for Cristiano Ronaldo groupies. Juventus have confirmed today in a report that Cristiano Ronaldo is okay to play against Napoli at the weekend. And this is despite concerns that he would miss the game due to an injury to his left ankle. Ronaldo trained separately from the rest of the group uh, yesterday and tests were taken between yesterday and today to ensure that the forward is in good enough condition to play in the weekend's fixture. Now, Napoli is sitting a good seven points behind. Is it necessary for them to be pushing for Cristiano Ronaldo to be in good shape for this particular Again. Yeah, I don't know why they're doing it because they might just aggravate the injury as well. And they are comfortable at the top, and they're actually a much stronger team even without Cristiano Ronaldo. They are still good enough to beat anybody in the talent. Yeah, so I don't know why they are pushing for that instead of having Cristiano have a full recovery and come back and he's in proper yeah. form. Yeah, but, Mike, but, any but, ideas? but I, I think Napoli is going to go for it. Uh, you know, it's a uh, Desperate times uh, call for a desperate performance. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, you know, and the, what they'll, Napoli will be trying to do is, I know the gap is seven points, but they'll they be trying to, to say, okay, yeah. let, let's, let's see if we can close it to four points mm-hmm. and then see uh, how, how, what how can happen yeah. after, after that. that. Because Juventus still has some tricky games to come. You mm-hmm. know, games like AC versus AC Milan, Inter Milan. Games, yes, they can win, but games where Napoli will be hoping that uh, they can also be disturbed. But uh, disturbing Juventus has to begin with Napoli themselves. Mm-hmm. Because they can't look to other t- teams to do the business, and uh, the the other con- conversation, ma- uh, Chris, worth having is that uh, I think Cristiano Ronaldo. Um, one of the reasons why he went to Juventus after leaving Real Madrid is that he wanted to stay in a team where he's in the limelight, mm-hmm. where he's yeah. a- at the very at top. The top. Uh, and I think this season, if you take a look at the body of work of the leading contenders for the Ballon d'Or uh, from August. I think he has fallen a considerable distance behind Lionel Messi uh, this season. Uh, and he needs to put in some really big performances now, between now uh, and the end of the season, uh, to put himself back in the frame. Uh, because if you take a look at the Champions League, uh, he has been outshone by Messi. You take a look at the local league, the things that Messi has been doing consistently, mm-hmm. uh, he's been outshown again. So I think he, 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 he insists on playing. He's that type of player who wants to play every game. If he's half fit, if he can he'd run, rather just the, run on. He'd rather run on and put in a performance because for Ronaldo it's not just about the team it's also about himself and his personal aspirations uh, which are key to sometimes why he's running out of the field even though he's maybe 85-90% fit Okay and just taking a look at his career as 
a whole, how much more time does he have? If he's competing for this at, at this extent where he's injured and he's coming back in, he's not in full form, is he seeing, okay, these are like my twilight years now and I'm trying to get the best that I can out of the time I have left? I think so. I, I think uh, one more season where he's at the very top uh, mm-hmm. after this one. I think he's got one more. Then after that, I think he'll be a good player. But you know what? There, there, there comes a time when you can't run as quickly as you used to. And that's uh, he has already yeah, slowed down. Yeah, exactly. Even now, he has already slowed down. Yeah, yeah. and you know, speed used to be a, a key attribute to Ronaldo's yeah. game. Mm. Uh, and so, unless he then redefines, but Ronaldo is not so like your midfielder. He's, he's not, not a playmaker. He's not a playmaker type player. Mm, uh, though not. I believe he's got the talent. Uh, if he, 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 if he decides, if he, he switches it that on, that comes yeah. down to his personality, though. You can make Cristiano Ronaldo. Ronaldo, as a player, do anything technically. I, d- I don't think you'd enjoy it. He wouldn't enjoy it. I don't he's think not so gonna, because he, he is just Mr. Goals. Yeah, he is Mr. Goals. Mm. He won't enjoy playing in midfield, giving others chances, chances <laughs> to score. <laughs> <laughs> I think which, no. is, which is then yeah, different. I, I don't think, think like, he's if a, you take a look kind of at, at Messi, mm-hmm. who's who who looks like he enjoys the service. Yes, uh, Messi does. Yeah. Yes, he enjoys the assists. So it'll be interesting to see uh, which way things pan out. The rest of your Serie A fixtures, Cagliari takes on Inter Milan. Empoli will be hosting Parma, AC Milan versus Sassuolo, Lazio against Roma, Torino will take on Kievo, Genoa against Frosinone, Spa will take on Sampdoria, Udinese host Bologna, Atalanta versus Fiorentina, and the big one, Napoli taking on Juventus. Horsepower unmatched. Talk to beat the best. Speed unrivaled. Sleek and easy on the eye. Let's get behind the wheel of football engineered to perfection. The Bundesliga, made in Germany. The man that they call Rolls Royce, Marco Royce, is expected to return to the starting lineup as leaders Borussia Dortmund seek to maintain their hold on top spot in the table when they face Augsburg tonight after struggling with injuries that led to an off color display in last weekend's disastrous 5 1 loss to Freiburg. Augsburg have been boosted by news that the injury that forced captain Daniel Bayer off in the Black Forest is nothing serious. And uh, Augsburg, I think they're like a fifth from the bottom. Uh, yeah, they're so, struggling. So it's, it's a wonderful opportunity for Borussia Dortmund just to keep that scoreboard pressure, would call it in cricket, of being at the top. So, uh, and just put the pressure on Bayern Munich who are chasing. Yeah, I think uh, this is a chance for, for, for Borussia Dortmund to actually come back into the recording and actually strengthen their position. Because right now, they are now if, uh, Bayern Munich breathing down their necks and they can't afford to lose any more points. And it's a perfect opportunity. They are facing Augsburg that are struggling, so they should be good for these three points and put pressure on Bayern Munich. Okay, let's take a look at your fixtures. Nuremberg takes on Leipzig, Bayer Leverkusen versus Freiburg, Eintracht Frankfurt will entertain Hoffenheim, Schalke or Fear will welcome Fortuna Dusseldorf, Hertha Berlin versus Mainz, Borussia Mönchengladbach versus Bayern Munich. Good match that one, yeah. as Borussia Mönchengladbach are vying for a top four finish. Stuttgart versus Hannover, Wolfsburg versus Werder Bremen, and Augsburg takes on Borussia. Dortmund. You want to turn your TV into an entertainment hub and choose what you want to watch with the all-new Quest Set Play device. You can enjoy seamless entertainment streaming on apps such as Quest Set, iFlix, Netflix, YouTube and Al Jazeera. You can also watch unlimited entertainment from live sport events, movies, series, top kids shows and you can even play games on video channels. You want to get your Quest Set Play device today at zwstore.quest.com or you can visit your nearest Econet shop for only $59. Right, guys, uh, that's a wrap uh, for this week. And, of course, uh, we'll be back uh, on the show next week on Monday, 5 past 6. Don't miss it as we take a look back at the weekend action. You heard the results coming in from the studio. Pause and anticipating a six-goal thriller uh, between (laughs) Spurs and uh, Arsenal. So you don't want to miss uh, miss that game. It's the early kickoff, the first game of the weekend in the English Premier League. Catch all your favorite sporting action on Quesse iFlix. Download Quesse iFlix today on Google Play Store or Apple App Store and enjoy entertainment on the go. That was the beautiful game brought to you by Quesse iFlix. Quesse iFlix, entertainment on the go. sure to catch ZFM Sport every weekday on ZFM Stereo. My station, your station. 